Hello, continuing the 140 watt power adapter quest, four more adapters that all appear to be unique have been released. I have skipped some adapters because these are further clones of the ones I've already tested. The items here appear to be unique versus other market items. These adapters will have the USB extended power range mode to deliver 140 watts on one port. The products that will support this standard are slowly expanding, but as of now, it is mostly power adapters. We will explore these four new power adapters to see how they compare to the now 15 total 140 watt power adapters I have looked over. It will be interesting to see if one of these can topple the leader or if the usual sacrifices have been made. Did the top tier make it less safe to gain a bit of efficiency? Join me as I review these power adapters. If you are new here, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? These videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons and channel contributors. First, let's get these power adapters opened up to see what we get. The packaging ranges from plastic windowed retail packages to simple understated boxes. The Ego A generic box power adapter is first. The packaging is a giant box with no actual branding on the outside at all. The power adapter provides two USB-C ports and one USB-A port. The user manual is adequate and provides some details on the performance, but nothing special really. The USB-C ports share the power levels and do renegotiate on plug and unplug of USB cables. The power adapter lacks both a safety listing and the six in a circle, which is the energy efficiency testing mark. We will have to check if it meets the requirements of that method. The power adapter weighs 388 grams while the packaging was 80 grams. The adapter is heavier and larger than the others, but it is also a desktop style, so it comes with a power cord. The power cord has no compliance marks either. The adapter has the usual modes of operation, 5, 9, 12, 15, 20, and 28 volt fixed output voltages, but lacks any programmable power supply modes. Power adapters have a protection circuit built in to turn the power adapter off in the case of an overload, which is too many watts being drawn, or a short circuit condition. This power adapter tripped with an overload protection at 174 watts. This is not great and shows there may be some issues with the circuitry inside of this adapter. When looking at the overall data, we see this is actually a good performer, but we have seen this before. It trades efficiency for power quality in a bad way. The idle power is too high for the Department of Energy as well. This adapter does not meet the DOE 6 requirements. With the lack of a safety listing and some of the other performance statistics, this one may be cheap, but I probably wouldn't gamble plugging in a $3,000 MacBook Pro to this. Power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current, and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. The goal is to have all the waves look the same shape as the yellow line, a sine wave. These power adapters all have PFC. The implementations vary quite a bit, with some being rather inefficient when they turn on, and others not turning on until 60 watts are used. Overall, it is good that they have this feature though, and all of these 140 watt power adapters have it. The Yeohi comes in the fanciest packaging, also the heaviest, which means a lot of wasted materials. Upon looking over this adapter, you get two USB-C ports and one USB-A port. The power is different for each of the ports and they are somewhat cryptically labeled. The adapter has a safety listing, which is also always welcome. The adapter has the DOE mark, a six in a circle, and as always, this will be checked. The power adapter weighed 307 grams while the packaging was 100 grams. The adapter is right in line with other 140 watt offerings weight and size wise. This does have an LED indicator showing essentially how much power is being used. The adapter has the usual modes of operation, 5, 9, 12, 15, 20, and 28 volt fixed output voltages as well as a 21 volt PPS mode with 4.5 amps of current available. This can go up to about 90 watts of power out in the programmable or adjustable power mode. The power adapter does safely shut down under an overload condition at 153 watts. As expected, and with all the adapters shown here, any plug and unplug resets the currently plugged in power level so the device renegotiates the power level. When looking at the overall data, we see that the AOE looks okay. The power adapter has high efficiency. The voltage is a little on the lower side, which is one of the downsides for this adapter. The power adapter does change modes at about 60 watts of input power, so it's a little later than the others, which does lower the quality score a bit. This adapter trades efficiency for that though. The idle power and efficiency mean that it does meet the DOE 6 requirements. This adapter is safety listed and in general is not a bad power adapter performance wise. The insignia comes with a rather detailed user manual. That covers the whole series of power adapters. Here is a close up of the specs for this one. The packaging is a bit larger, but this also has to compete on a retail shelf, so I kind of understand. It has a window, so you can look upon the monolithic block inside. No idea. 
The adapter provides two USB-C ports. The power is the same for each of the ports. They renegotiate to 100 watts and 45 watts with two ports used. Yep, you get five extra watts for free. Safety listing, which is always welcome. The adapter has the Department of Energy 6 mark, the 6 in a circle. The power adapter weighed 297 grams, while the packaging was 70 grams. The USB cable is 8 feet long and weighed 96 grams. The adapter is right in line with the other 140 watt offerings on weight, and it is a bit larger size-wise. The adapter has the usual modes of operation of 5, 9, 15, 20, and 28 volt fixed output voltages, but lacks any programmable power supply modes and also lacks a 12 volt mode. The power adapter tripped with an overload protection at 152 watts. This is a safe limit. When looking at the overall data, we see that this is a very good performer. The power adapter has reasonable efficiency. The output voltage is a bit low in the 28 volt mode, but far from the worst of the bunch. The idle power and efficiency means it meets the DOE 6 requirements. This device is safety listed and all around meets the requirements of a power adapter. Plus, you get a USB cable with it. The Invisi didn't come with any manual at all. The packaging is very compact, which I like, but it does come with a double wrapped in plastic and then also in a plastic tray. They did supply a thank you card at least. Upon looking over this adapter, you get three USB-C ports. The power is different for each of the ports, but thankfully the ports are labeled so we know which port can deliver more power and which can deliver less. The Invisi has a safety listing, which is also always welcome. I don't see the Department of Energy 6 in a circle mark on this product though. We will have to check if it meets the requirements of that method. The Invisi is, like its lower wattage counterparts, compatible with the international clip-on plugs. The power adapter weighs 311 grams while the packaging was only 24 grams. The adapter is right in line with other 140 watt offerings, size-wise and weight-wise, really. The adapter has the usual modes of operation, 5, 9, 12, 15, 20, and 28 volt fixed output voltages, as well as an 11 volt and a 21 volt PPS mode with five amps of current available each to get the full 45 or 100 watts of power out in the programmable or adjustable power mode. This power adapter does overstretch a little bit with an overload protection trip at 165 watts. This is pushing it, but it did safely shut down and recover. As expected, and with all the other adapters shown here, any plug and unplug resets the currently plugged in power level so the device renegotiates. When looking at the overall data, we see that the Invisi doesn't look bad. The power adapter has reasonable efficiency and something I like to see, stable output voltage that is within the tolerance of the USB specification. The idle power and efficiency means that it actually does meet the DOE 6 requirements and it probably went through this testing but they just didn't put the logo on the product. Good to know it meets the energy efficiency requirements. The device is safety listed and has the ability to go international and all around meets the requirements of a power adapter. Okay, time to compare the data. I have tested near everything available in the 140 watt EPR adapter category, so plenty to compare to. When comparing the idle data with others, three of these are good and one of them is bad. The Ego Way stands out as the sore thumb with its high idle power usage. The other three meet the idle requirements for the Department of Energy. I'm really looking at Apple as the gold standard on this metric, and being in the same range as them is great. We know that the Dong Wang lacks a safety listing and that the Anchor 717 self-destruct, so the next best reasonable adapter is the Apple. On the idle graph, there are a lot of adapters around a quarter of a watt. This is on the higher side, but as you can see, in line with the competition. There are a few outliers in the Ego A and Nick Power use a bit too much on idle. The more modern options from Aohi, Invisi, and Insignia all had good performance though. When comparing the overall data with the others, these adapters are relatively compact. The Aohi really behaves the worst with its modes of operation and therefore it takes the lowest spot. The Apple wasn't far behind, but it is so efficient compared with the others that it's probably the choice if you are charging at high speed and then not using the adapter. If you're charging a phone, both of these are a bad choice. Of today's options, all of these power adapters meet the Department of Energy 6 mark for efficiency requirements. On the average power consumption graph, from left to right, you can see the Apple is the most efficient and the Basius and Ego A are the least efficient. Some sacrifice power quality for efficiency, some perform quite well. I am still impressed by the middle of the category, the EHO ID Mix Rotserin 140 watt adapters. Early to market and really strong performers overall. Let's talk about value. These 140 watt adapters tend to be very expensive. They do often go on sale and I'd recommend picking one up on sale if that is an option because the full price is hard to say go for it. The Ego Way stands out with its excellent value but when I see that value paired with no safety listing and it's less than perfect performance, it isn't for me. The others in the mix today don't represent the best value either but 
they at least mostly meet the basic requirements of a power adapter. I still lean on that upper middle category of Roserin ID Mix EHO for the go-to in this category, mid-value. Okay, even more 140 watt power adapters, and I'm sure there are already more on the way. I hear Anchor is releasing a whole new line of power adapters and power banks, all the way up to 240 watts this time. Not sure if it's on one port though, but I know someone who will find out. In terms of these power adapters, the pick of today is Invisi. It is an easy choice with good idle performance, meets the energy or efficiency standards, has a safety listing, meets USB voltage specifications, is fairly small, and can travel. On the opposite end of that spectrum is the Ego Way, which is a no-go. It has too many issues, but it is really cheap. You could buy two Ego Ways for the price of one of any of the others, maybe even three. The market demand for an adapter of this size has obviously changed, but there are still a fairly limited market for devices that actually require 140 watts on one USB-C port. I would like to see some USB hubs that can distribute power more effectively to devices like desktops or monitors, and laptop, etc. The Aohi is the best efficiency of this bunch, but it is a little light on voltage. If your device is tolerant of that and doesn't mind a little extra current, then it doesn't seem bad. Out of the bunch, the only one that didn't have an LED is the Insignia. It is hiding away, but it is also a very reasonable choice. This one also had somewhat low voltage on the USB side, but not terrible. This one did come with a USB cable. I'll get that added to the USB cables list at some point. In comparison with the previous rounds of 140 watt adapters, I don't see any real surprises here. In the continuation for more power adapters, we find that there are some new competitors out there trying to make the next best power adapter. They all seem pretty close performance wise. Invisi and Insignia seem to be the winners of this round, with Invisi taking the edge. Okay, time to apply the stickers. These are tested and on the database, so you can take a look at how they stack up. These are all not perfect, but perfection is an impossible goal. If you want one, affiliate links to these and other options are in the description. Thanks for watching. My plan is to review some power banks next week, including this newer and smaller version of the Bassius Blade. I also have the EcoFlow River 2 on the way shortly thereafter. There is a schedule of videos on the All Things website, link in the description. Thanks again, goodbye.